Nothing lasts forever, especially when Hollywood is concerned. Whether they're classic comedies or action-packed spectacles, these iconic film franchises have been left behind by the studios that created them. The Mummy series has a long history of remakes and reboots. The Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz incarnation of the film that most filmgoers are familiar with is actually just one in a long line of adaptations of the same story. That's why it shouldn't have come as a huge surprise when Universal Pictures released a new take on the franchise in the form of 2017's The Mummy. Starring Tom Cruise as U.S. soldier Nick Morton, the film follows Morton after he inadvertently resurrects an ancient Egyptian princess who was mummified alive. Estimates suggest that The Mummy lost Universal Pictures tens of millions of dollars as reviewers lambasted the film. That wasn't all. The failure of the film had even larger consequences, effectively canceling an entire franchise before it had even managed to properly establish itself. The Dark Universe was Universal's answer to the MCU, an interconnected cinematic series built around classic horror films. A now infamous Twitter post teased projects starring Russell Crowe, Johnny Depp, and Javier Bardem, but none of them ever came to fruition. My name is Jekyll, Dr. Henry Jekyll. Just a few months after the release of The Mummy, the studio postponed one of the projects before the franchise was scrapped entirely. Like many other movie franchises, Divergent is adapted from a series of young adult novels. The action of this series mainly takes place in a dystopian version of Chicago, where humans are strictly divided into one of five groups depending on what their dominant virtue is. Protagonist Triss Pryor, played by Shailene Woodley, joins the faction that values courage and discovers a sinister conspiracy at the heart of this post-apocalyptic society. The first film in the collection hit cinema screens in 2014, grossing more than $288 million against a budget of $85 million. That success was enough to lead to two sequels arriving over the next two years, despite a rather mixed reception from critics and fans. While the first movie was helmed by Neil Berger, who had proven himself a capable director with Limitless years earlier, Robert Schwenke, the man responsible for the box office bomb R.A.P.D., took on the job for the sequels. The follow-ups were met with criticism and failed to meet financial expectations alongside significantly increased budgets. Plans for the second entry in the two-part finale to conclude the story were ultimately shelved, while a possible television spinoff was also canceled. This was most likely a result of the original actors turning down the chance to continue playing their characters in a smaller budget setting. Based on Rick Reardon's young adult novel series of the same name, the Percy Jackson film series started out in 2010 with the release of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. This first installment was directed by Chris Columbus, the legendary director behind everything from Home Alone and Mrs. Doubtfire to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. With such an esteemed name behind the project, there was hope that it would lead to an entire franchise. The Percy Jackson series takes place in modern times, where ancient Greek gods live alongside humans. Percy Jackson is the demigod's son of Poseidon, and he embarks on a mission to rescue his mother and return Zeus's lightning bolt to prevent an all-out war between the deities. The second entry in the series, Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters, arrived three years later in 2013 and sees Percy attempt to reclaim the lost Golden Fleece. Fans, critics, and even original author Reardon all chastised the filmmakers for deviating significantly from the source material. This may have been part of the reason why the films failed to find much success at the box office, and why there have been no attempts to add any extra installments to this movie franchise. The gods are angry. However, a new live-action TV series for Disney Plus is in the works, with Reardon working closely on the production to ensure it follows the books. Written and directed by Wolfgang Peterson, with Herman Weigel also contributing to the screenplay, 1984's The NeverEnding Story is an adaptation of German author Michael Endy's novel of the same name. The tale follows a young boy called Bastian who finds himself absorbed in a magical book. The mystical land at the center of the story, Fantasia, is being threatened by a mysterious and seemingly malevolent force known only as the Nothing. The NeverEnding Story was not a huge financial success, but it did draw plaudits from critics for its imaginative narrative and striking visuals. The first film is now well remembered, but its subsequent sequels are usually not held in the same regard. The NeverEnding Story 2, the next chapter, failed to make back its budget. 
while The NeverEnding Story 3 told a completely original tale, but it did use familiar characters from the previous films and the original novel. Despite its title, The NeverEnding Story did indeed end after three installments. The series has remained dormant ever since, and there is little evidence that it will be returning to the screen in the near future. Parody films have been a part of the Hollywood machine for a long time, from Airplane to Galaxy Quest and Shaun of the Dead, some of the most successful comedies of all time have been parodies. The Scary Movie franchise is one of the more memorable parody series out there, with five installments released from 2000 to 2013. Created by the Wayans brothers, the movies typically poke fun at tropes within horror films, lampooning properties such as Scream and The Ring. What's up? <laughs> None of the entries in the Scary Movie series have been critical darlings, but the first movie proved to be a huge box office hit. It made more than $270 million against a budget of just $19 million, but subsequent films have faced dwindling success. Part of the reason the series has remained dormant since Scary Movie 5 could well be because of a dispute between the Wayans brothers and Studio Dimension Films. The brothers have previously spoken about how they felt the franchise was stolen from them and exploited with too many films. The Highlander franchise is arguably one of the most bizarre movie series in history. Through five live-action films of questionable quality, along with numerous television series and animated projects, the series continued from the 1980s all the way up to 2007. The first entry, simply titled Highlander, saw Christopher Lambert take on the role of Connor McCloud an immortal being trapped in an endless battle with other immortals attempting to take each other's powers. Mentored by Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez, played by John Connery, he attempts to stop the evil figure known as the Kurgan from claiming the coveted prize. Subsequent films, some of which have essentially been retconned by future installments, follow McLeod and Ramirez and tell of their origins as well as future adventures. While none of the films have been major box office successes, the original Highlander has developed a cult following spawning everything from comics and novels to video games. However, the movie series has languished for some time, and it seems filmmakers are no closer to bringing McCloud back to the big screen. After appearing in a handful of radio and TV commercials, Jim Barney's goofy character Ernest P. Worrell made the jump to feature film in 1987. Starting with Ernest Goes to Camp, Ernest went on a number of exciting adventures, nine to be exact. Ernest is a fast-talking and seemingly invulnerable figure who loves disguises, and he gets into various mishaps including a stint behind bars and a return to school. Despite his movies largely failing to resonate with critics, they were commercially successful thanks to their low budgets. The final Ernest film, Ernest in the Army, released directly to video in 1998. Several other entries in the franchise were shelved before filming began, and Varney passed away in 2000 before any other projects could be made. A possible reboot of the series was explored in 2012 under the title Son of Ernest, but it never came to fruition. There's been no word about any potential further films since then, and it's hard to imagine that any living actor would be able to do the iconic character justice. What we've got here is a failure to accumulate. Officially titled Homeward Bound The Incredible Journey, this 1993 adventure film follows a band of two dogs and a cat who find themselves journeying across America when they're forgotten in a move thanks to a miscommunication. It's essentially a remake of the 1963 film The Incredible Journey, which features a similar group of animals and was based on an even earlier novel by Sheila Burnford. Receiving widespread acclaim from both critics and audiences, Homeward Bound was successful enough to warrant a sequel. The second film was released in 1996 under the name Homeward Bound 2, Lost in San Francisco. And it sees the same animals traveling through the California streets after their family takes a vacation abroad. However, it didn't quite capture the same magic as its predecessor, and following the release of the sequel, which once again starred Michael J. Fox and Sally Field, there have been no other Homeward Bound movies. The Dirty Harry film series first began in 1971, charting the story of Clint Eastwood's Harry Callahan as he attempts to track down a serial killer known as Scorpio. This no-nonsense cop isn't afraid to use his violent tendencies and some unorthodox methods to take down the man terrorizing San Francisco and bring justice back to the streets. What I'm saying is that man had rights. Well, I'm all broken up about that man's rights. 
Eastwood's performance and the popularity of Callahan as a character quickly led to further releases. Magnum Force was the first Dirty Harry sequel in 1973, which was then followed up by The Enforcer in 1976 and Sudden Impact in 1983. The final appearance of the detective came in 1988 in a film called The Dead Pool, bringing the Dirty Harry series to a close. Despite the fact that the franchise established a new archetype for relentless detectives who are willing to work outside the law, the series has never been revived. The first film in what has become known as the Billy Jack film series arrived in 1967 in the form of The Born Losers. This was followed by the 1971 movie Billy Jack and later The Trial of Billy Jack and Billy Jack Goes to Washington. Portrayed by Tom Laughlin, Billy Jack is a heroic half-Navajo Green Beret who protects a community of outcasts and underrepresented students. Jack does everything he can not just to help those in need, but to safeguard the weak. As the series progresses, Billy Jack touches on everything from Native American rights to the effects of the Vietnam War. Jack eventually stands trial for his actions and even enters politics as a senator to continue his mission of fighting for those that others have forgotten. The final installment was released in 1977, and plans for a revival in 1985 called The Return of Billy Jack were ultimately cancelled after Laughlin suffered a serious head injury and production funds ran out. One of the earliest film franchises in Hollywood, The Thin Man was a comedy mystery series featuring two protagonists from Dashiell Hammett's 1934 novel of the same name. Husband and wife duo Nick and Nora Charles find themselves playing detective in various films and the quick-witted, sophisticated, and occasionally argumentative pairing became something of a trope in detective stories, spawning a host of copycats. Played by William Powell and Myrna Loy in all six films between 1934 and 1947, the sleuths would use their understanding of glamorous lifestyles and instincts for spotting hidden clues to solve cases. The movies featuring the pair are widely seen as classics, and the influence of the Thin Man series has been important to the detective genre. Unfortunately, very few modern film fans are aware of who these characters are or the films that they were a part of, as the franchise has been left abandoned, except for a brief time when Johnny Depp was expected to lead a revival.